Welcome to round two of our Kubota BX versus Deer 1025R review. Today we're going to take a look at the mower, the mid-mount mower deck on each unit. Actually, we've built a list of all the things that we want to investigate about these mowers, and we've realized it's too much for one episode. So we've divided it into two episodes. This first one, we're going to focus on what we would call specifications and setup. So that'll be stuff we can do here in the shed. And in the next episode, we're actually going to look at the operational aspects. That'll be stuff out in the yard. I think you'll love it. Stay tuned for both episodes. Now, I've spent longer preparing for this episode probably than any video episode we've ever done. If you see things that you think that I've misrepresented or maybe just missed about these tractors, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments. We try to do our best to do fair comparisons and just to provide helpful information. We know both of these tractors are incredible tractors. The point of this comparison is to help you decide which of these tractors might be best for you. We can't make that decision, but we can provide some information, information that you might not see on the spec sheet or you just might not hear mentioned anywhere else. Okay, let's take a look at the deck lift height now. This is often talked about as one of the reasons why removing the mower deck is not as important on the Kubota tractor. That's a good point. The BX is right at six inches. It shows about five and three quarters here. It's a little bit hard to measure because you can kind of yank the deck around and, and it'll be different. That's a full six inches there. How about the deer? I'm just measuring to the bottom portion of the deck itself. Seems like a fair way to measure. On the deer, it's not quite four inches. It's a little worse in front on mine. I don't think mine's adjusted quite high enough on these fronts. I probably should work on that a little bit, but this is how I've been running it, so <laughs> it's real world, right? So at least a two inch difference. This one is two inches higher than this one. Now, I've got this bolt-on step from Ken's bolt-on hooks on this tractor, and we've heard reports of other folks say that their deck is adjusted high enough that this step doesn't fit with the deer load-and-go mechanism. So for that reason, I'm assuming that my deck is adjusted lower than a lot of decks. So this four inch measurement that I'm showing you is probably lower than a lot of decks. Still, we won't get up to the six inches uh, on the BX, but we probably could get another half an inch or so because some folks are saying that they simply cannot use it with this step. At some point in the future, I'm intending to have a comprehensive auto connect deck adjustment video. I just haven't done that yet. And since mine works, it's hard for me to, well, go ahead and make the effort to go through the full adjustment episode. Now we're gonna take off and reinstall the mower deck on the BX. I'll profess not to be an expert here, so I don't think I wanna make this a timed install. I will show you the technique, and I'll also tell you that I learned this technique uh, from Neil Messick's video doing the same thing. Neil's video did an excellent job of showing the technique. I think he might have made it look a little more simple than it is in reality, but his technique is fabulous. So you might watch his video if you're trying to learn how to, to successfully take the deck off. Uh, certainly prioritize it above mine as uh, I don't have as much experience on it as he would. Now one thing Neil skipped was turning these wheels sideways and I'm gonna do that because uh, a lot of our viewers uh, well are just not physically capable of, of doing that hard pull that Neil does to, to pull the deck out from under. And so we're gonna go ahead and do it the formal way and there was a lot of comments on his video of folks suggesting that he go ahead and demonstrate that technique. It's easy to turn these wheels sideways. You have to do them one at a time. This is like a little key ring kind of uh, clip here. The negative thing is, is you have to remember which hole this was in because just the way you have to turn it and everything, it does, there's no mechanism to remember that. Okay, I've dialed that dial to the zero position and I've lowered the deck all the way. 
Now we're going to start here at the front and work our way to the back. When we reinstall, we're going to start at the back and work our way to the front. That seemed to be the easiest way for me to remember it. There's a pin on my left side and a handle here on my right side. I'm going to pull outward on the pin, so I lower that lever. Then we slide that forward right out of that angle. And we'll set this piece aside. Okay, then to get this piece out, I push it backwards and I find it's easier if I grab it with a hand back under there. Otherwise, there's hardly enough room for it to come out. So this is the first time I've ended up on my back during this uninstall. The first time I took the front pieces off, I didn't end up down here because this bracket came out easier. But this time it kind of got hung up and I had to get under there and see. But anyway, I don't think this will be the last time I'm on the floor. Okay, so I grab this pin here and I pull it and there's a little slot that it'll latch into. Okay, we'll do that on both sides. Just pull the pin out, latch it into the slot. Now when I did that, it fell down, which is okay. So the next step is to lift up this mechanism. So we'll start the tractor and we'll lift up the mower lift mechanism and that should lift it right out of that slot. Okay, so the lift mechanism is out of the way. That only leaves one more piece um, and that's unhooking the PTO shaft. Okay, I'm on my back for the second time and this time we're actually gonna uh, unhook that PTO shaft. There's a sleeve around the outside of it that you pull back and that allows the PTO shaft to slide forward. So we're gonna do that now. I've taken my index finger and my second finger to pull the sleeve back and then the shaft came right off. So that really wasn't difficult to take that off. Now, one more step and that is to get the deck out from under the tractor. Now this is the step where Neil just pulled it sideways with the wheels straight. It is considerably easier to turn the wheels and pull it out this way, but I mean if you're strong enough you can, you can certainly grab it. One thing Neil did as well was to turn the front wheels. He started the tractor and turned them to allow it to get out. Uh, I'm not sure yet which way to even turn them, so I'm just gonna try to manhandle a little bit, see where I'm hitting. Okay, I'm hitting on the far side. You're gonna help me? Okay, look at that. Wait, gotta get the shaft here turned a little bit out of the way. Now the front roller is hitting on the tire. Now this bolt here hit on the mower frame as it came across and we just used the John Wayne approach and, and uh, pulled it extra hard and it slapped against it and came on out. Okay, with two or three back and forth, uh, it, it, it doesn't fit straight out so you kind of have to go slide it back and forth just a little bit. Neil did that in his episode as well. We now have the mower removed. Glad I didn't dress up for this, Christy. Yeah. Uh, while I've got it out, I'm gonna put a little grease in these splines. There's no grease fitting here. I'm a little disappointed at that. There are grease fittings in the U-joints, but I'd like to have that spline grease because when I go to put that shaft on it, I need every bit of help I can get. You say there's no grease fitting here, so, and given that's a spline like this, there's really no choice but to do this with your finger or a rag or something. I'm using a lube shuttle grease gun with a lock and lube tip. That is my favorite greasing solution. Make fun, I don't care. It's greasing to me. It can be greasing to all of you guys, but it's greasing to me. Okay, now we're going to install the deck. Uh, so we'll go right back under here. I need that John Wayne moment. What's it stuck on? Oh, that same bolt is stuck on the frame of the tractor or the mower lift mechanism frame, one of the two. There, I got it. No, actually this is uh, on my back number one during the install, right? Before I get it all the way under here, I'm gonna try to hook up that shaft. I think that'll give me a little more space. This is an example of doing something the second time and maybe having a little better idea. The first time I tried to pull it all the way over to its final position before I connected the shaft. This time I'm going to try to connect it at a little bit of an angle and then once I have the shaft connected 
pull it over into its final position. Okay, so this is the hardest step of the entire installation or actually removal process, and that's getting the PTO shaft back on. So I try to hook that shaft up there, and the first thing is to try to find a spline. Oh, I found the spline. So do that first. Try to line up the splines before you worry about pulling the uh, collar back. Once you get the splines lined up, put the, pull that collar back, and then you can slide it on. Folks, that went incredibly easy, and it took me 10 minutes on my first try. And I believe it has to do with the order of operations there. Don't even worry about the collar until you get the spline lined up. Uh, once you have the spline started, it'll go in maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. Then pull your collar back, and you can go ahead and slide it on. And slide it on until the collar snaps back forward. At that point, you're actually connected. Okay, so now I've got to line this up under this connector again. So I'm gonna have to pull it backwards a little bit and get it lined up right under there. Now, meanwhile, this has slid out of its little slot there. Now I'll go check the other side to see if that's lined up. We'll have to make sure this is, make sure the pin is pulled back here ready and then make sure this is good okay now we're ready to lower the three point looks like I need to go forward a little bit with the mower and if it's not binding on either side it'll go down by itself there we go that okay. side's in get this side out see if we can get it there it goes in One thing I notice here is that angle. Yeah, I prefer that angle. Okay, that's in. Okay, remember we're working from the back to the front. So we started with the PTO shaft, then we did these rear connectors, now we'll do the front connector. Again, I'm back down here. I shouldn't have to be on my back, but it's not fitting quite right. Oh, there we go. So first we'll slide this up here and get it setting in its hook. Go up. And that's how you do it. With a little practice, this is not a monumental task. It's much easier than it is on a you know, a, a traditional lawnmower that sets so much lower uh, and is expected to have its deck on, you know, 98% of the time. Now the final step is to turn our wheels back to the proper direction. We'll raise the mower. We'll turn each wheel to its final mowing location. You have to remember which hole you were using. If you always use the same height for mowing, this will be indicative because it'll be worn a little bit in that area. Well, this one apparently has used two different heights because I can see some wear at one notch lower than this. Now let's talk through the steps to get Johnny's deck off. Um, we've just backed it right in here now. Um, the first thing we do is unclip these. That allows them to flex, okay? Note that it remembers its depth so that you don't have to remember that for yourself. Now, Next thing we do is we raise the mower all the way to the top so that we can move this knob. Now, just like the other mower it has a zero position, this one has what they call an install position. Uh, and it's the very same type of mechanism there, but this is what allows it to go to its lowest point. Now we can let the mower down, and it should push those wheels up, and the deck should lay on, flat on the ground. Okay, the next step is to flip this lever downward. It will flop over center. And you only have to do this on one side because it's, it's attached to the other side. Both sides act at the same time. Okay, we're finished under the tractor. I ended up on one knee for this step. Unless something goes wrong, 
that's the worst it'll be. Now when I get the tractor started, I have to ensure it's in four wheel drive. We have to have the front wheels engaged to be able to back off the deck. If you notice, it slid just a little bit on the concrete. In the case of the Deer Auto Connect deck, if you have a nice level grassy surface, sometimes that actually works better than concrete. You won't get any of that sliding because of the increased friction that you have in grass. But you can do it on concrete as you saw here. When it's time to put the deck back on, I, I approach the deck straight on like this. Uh, I make sure that I have my uh, mower knob in the install position such that that more mechanism lowers under the tractor. Lower the three-point hitch all the way down, or if you have the uh, hydraulic lift or independent hydraulic lift, you lower the mechanism all the way down with that. Tractor's got to be in four-wheel drive, and we drive back over the deck. Here we go. Okay, you can tell that you're fully attached if you try to pick up the mower deck and it comes up. If only the back half comes up or if it doesn't come up at all, well, something didn't quite work right. But that's all there is to connecting the deck, except for one more thing. We gotta get those wheels realigned. Now you never know, the wheels may have turned sideways or something, but really all there is to, to do this is to flip those back down, make sure they go into the hole. There you go, just like that. Now you might ask, what about that spring-loaded uh, clip that we turned downward when we were doing the uninstall? You don't have to worry about that on the install. Uh, the spring-loaded nature of it, when you drive over it, it, it flops it back up behind the pin automatically. So you don't have to touch it on install. We're ready to go. So we hear a lot of folks saying that the Auto Connect deck just doesn't work at all. It's not worth it. You don't want one of those. They just don't work like they're advertised. We've had three of them now and they all work great. There is some adjustment that has to be done to make these work. Now, when we first got this tractor, it was in poor adjustment. This was a 50-hour tractor, um, and it had not been adjusted properly. Christy and I didn't use any documentation. We just got under it and could kind of see what was or wasn't working, and we could make a few simple adjustments, and we had it working fine. Uh, in fact, you might have seen that video when we first got the load and go. That's when we did the adjustment on it that night. At some point, I still would like to do a formal uh, how to adjust your auto connect video. I just haven't got around to it yet. But with all three of the auto connect systems that we've used, two on a 1025R and one on a 2038R, once it's been adjusted, we've had no issues at all. Any mechanism like this is going to take some patience. I mean, you don't just drive on it as fast as you can. And, and you know, you, you have to be careful. You have to think about what you're doing because obviously there's some engineering here that's, that requires some finesse. This feature is a 30 second to one minute mower attachment feature uh, without ever laying on your back, without connecting a PTO shaft, as compared to maybe not a you know, horrible chore uh, on the other systems. But this makes our tractor so much more useful to us uh, than if we had to remove the mower deck uh, for everything that we do. You've seen our projects. You've seen that we use our tractor to the fullest. We're climbing brush piles. We're on very uneven surfaces. We, we put the tractor through its paces and, and get everything we can out of it. Oftentimes we are doing four, or five, six different types of projects in a one week period. If I have to remove the mower deck, reinstall the mower deck, 
each time between those projects, that's very, very time consuming for me. Now, different points are going to be important to different users. But for us, the attachability features, including and primarily this AutoConnect deck, are what set this tractor apart from the competition. I would be careful when listening to a salesperson of a competitive brand when they're telling you how bad the Deere AutoConnect system is. You've got to understand their bias. I think this bias is obvious and I think it's a disservice to customers to malign the competition and say unfair things about how well this system works. Is it perfect? No, but it works and it makes the tractor dramatically more effective and efficient. The Kubota deck lifts higher. We've seen that already. And that is a nice trade-off. It would be nice if we could get a couple inches more lift out of this deck. There would be some opportunities where we wouldn't need to remove the deck. But that doesn't take care of everything. Even though it raises a couple of inches higher, there's often times where we really need more clearance than that. Additionally, and probably more importantly, is the width. Uh, the deck is five foot wide at minimum, that's the mowing width, so it's, it's wider than that, and, and with the shields and all, it's probably close to seven feet wide. It reduces the tractor's uh, maneuverability significantly. Quite simply, your tractor's more effective with the mower deck off, and if you're honest with yourself, you'll take your mower deck off more frequently if it's trivial. My opinion, but you've heard it. Let's talk just a little bit about Rob's height. I've got this canopy on, that may make this a little harder to see. In the Kubota line, the BX2680 and 2380 have a shorter ROPS height than their backhoe cousin, the BX23S. This one's slightly over 82 inches tall. The backhoe version is slightly over 86 inches tall. The Deer uses the same ROPS for both backhoe and non-backhoe designs because, again, you can just add a backhoe to a, a deer tractor, so it's exactly the same tractor, it's not a separate model. This ROPS, I can't tell exactly, I couldn't find a spec uh, readily online for the 2018 and later deer, but this one appears to be about 91 inches tall. It's a little hard to tell because it's leaning inward, it's hard to measure to the ground, but it's taller than even the highest BX23S. In any case, these are too tall. They're very frustrating when you're mowing the yard. As you can see with the canopy here, it makes it really tall to put a canopy on top of. It doesn't shield you from as much sun as you would like. If you start with the 23S, none of them will fit in the seven foot garage. This one will. So overall, these ROPs are, are frustrating. I'm not sure why they have to be so tall. I know they have to be there and I know you have to try to keep them up because these tractors are tipsy. You have to keep the ROPs up because you never know. Uh, what might happen next. Obviously we don't want a rollover, but we've seen many photos online of rollovers, so we have to keep them up. I just wish they didn't have to be so tall. And I think most people who operate these machines feel the same way, but maybe it's just a necessary evil. Starting with the 2018 model year, the Deer went to this forward leaning ROPS on the 1025R. Earlier ones were more straight up or leaning slightly backwards like the BX. I'm not sure why they did this. My gut feel is that they did it so, for a European uh, rule, uh, not a U.S. rule, but did it so that they could be consistent between Europe and the United States. So I can't really explain why they've done that, but I did want to point it out. Let's talk just a little bit about mower lift mechanisms. Both of these tractors are using the three-point hitch with a connecting shaft uh, up to the mid-mount mower to do the lift. That's standard on both machines. That's the only available option on the BX. For the Deer, there are two more options. Both are what they refer to as hydraulic lifts. I, I'm not thrilled with that name, hydraulic lift, because even when you're using the three-point hitch, it's still hydraulic. It's not truly a mechanical lift like you'd think on your old Sears mower on either of these. It is hydraulically lifted. It's just combined with a three-point hitch. It connects to the one of the loader ports, so you unhook it each time you hook up the loader, or you can hook it up then when you don't have the loader on. The highest end option for the deer is called independent hydraulic lift. And in that case, you have a switch on the dash or a button on the dash that, that raises it and lowers it. I got more information on those lift options on our website, tractortimewithtim.com. Go check it out. I go through in detail each one, even list the part numbers and some recommendations. So I hope that helps. 
Again, on the BX, there's only one option, and I would say that a large percentage of the 1025Rs are sold with that base, what they refer to as mechanical lift option as well. Okay, let's take a little bit closer look at these decks. We've got them here side by side. The first thing I notice, of course, it would be the protruding aspect, but the gearbox on the BX deck is squashed. <laughs> I mean that positively. It's a, a nice narrow gearbox. I suspect these type of innovations is what is allowing them to have a little bit more lift height on their mower. It, it really sits in there compactly. I also noticed that that gearbox is directly connected to this middle spindle. Had a viewer point out to me this week that, that this was a weak spot that he found in, in one of his mowers. This particular viewer had hit something with his middle blade hit something severe, severe enough to damage the spindle. Well, it turns out when he damaged the spindle, he didn't just have to replace the spindle, he had to replace the entire gearbox because it's all made one piece. Let's look and see how the deer's done differently. Now, first we can see that the deer gearbox is taller, as we mentioned. It doesn't have that uh, compact design uh, that we saw on the BX mower. But we can also see that that gearbox and its pulley is not attached to that front spindle. It just drives a belt, which makes that spindle belt driven. That means if you hit something with your front spindle, you might destroy the spindle, but if it hits something good and hard, it's not gonna be a direct uh, you know, gear destruction. It's actually gonna slip the belt just like the other two spindles would. And that's part of the reason we use belt drive here, right? Is so that we can have these blades to have some degree of slippage if absolutely necessary. We don't want to be destroying gearboxes every time we hit something immovable, right? So that would be a disadvantage of the Kubota mower deck. I did a, I don't know, a, a little bit of a test. I don't have a good scale with me yet. Stay tuned. But I did a test just kind of picking up the front of it and all to, to kind of judge the weight. Uh, the deer deck felt a little heavier to me, but it also has these load and go brackets on it. So I think some of that weight is there. I really, I, I think it would be negligible, uh, the difference in weight. I could not test the thickness. Um, there's a couple places where I can see holes in both decks, and it looks to be roughly the same thickness. This is the seven gauge or seven iron deck for deer. I could not find any spec on the BX mower to see if it was uh, seven gauge or, or even heavier. Uh, so I don't know about that. If you have a spec on that, please post the link in the comments below. Although. You might look in the comments below, 43 people may have already posted it. The deer deck, now it's sitting on the floor right now on the back side, is roughly six inches tall. Uh, the front side, the skid's sitting on the floor, uh, but there's room then for grass to come under on the rest of it. But it's a level, smooth top. The BX deck is taller in the front and shorter in the back. Uh, in the rear, it's about four inches, and in the front, it's about that six inches. It looks like it also might get a little bit wider as it gets over towards the exhaust. Presumably this is an attempt to allow the grass to flow out of it. I wish that I had uh, heavier spring-like grass to actually test. I can't provide any honest feedback about you know, how the grass is ejected from this mower versus the deer mower. I just, uh, that's the next episode, but I'll repeat the same thing there. I just don't have uh, the kind of heavy grass right now that, that I need to do that kind of testing. I also don't have any feedback from online users to date to, that compare the two. So I'm sorry about that. We'll have to leave that for another time. Now one advantage I see here on the BX deck is the ability to remove these covers to get in here to service the deck. Now that's a simple plastic, plastic? Yeah, plastic uh, hand control knob. Okay, um, and screw that right back on. There, there's another one with just threads bare on this machine. It's possible that there's supposed to be another plastic knob to control this other side. Not to control it, but to hold it on. Uh, but this is a nice feature. In contrast here, I'm gonna show you the deer. Now it's a little hard to see because I've installed these load and go brackets, but these black plastic uh, cover shields are the same either way. They are actually bolted down, um, not as easy to remove as they are on the BX. They're still here and here. And they can be removed, just not quite as handily. Now we should take a minute to talk about the load and go. It is $250 extra, but wow, what a nice feature. With your John Deere quick attach loader, you can slide your quick attach right in there, pick it up. We've shown this in several episodes and 
Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous feature. Yes, it's more money, but it's something that's not available on any competitive brand that I know of. Okay, the BX deck has a nice center roller. This really helps to prevent scalping. The deer deck does not. It's got a skid plate. Now, if you look back in my video history, I showed putting a roller on my 54 inch deer deck, uh, but this one's made a little bit differently and would make installing a roller slightly more complex. So I haven't got around to trying that yet. Presumably the center roller was left out of this because of the auto connect deck and that little bit of slippage that you might see when you uninstall or install your deck. But a center roller really helps, so that's a nice BX feature missing on the deer. I think that about covers the mower setup and specs. If you feel like I've missed something, list it in the comments section below. If necessary, we'll do a follow-up episode just like we did on round one. If you missed that follow-up episode, please go back and check it out. Or if you missed round one, uh, where we talked about the three-point hitch uh, functionality, go back and check it out. Again, we intend to be as unbiased as we possibly can. Obviously, we have a favorite tractor or we wouldn't have purchased it for ourselves. But we know that these videos won't be useful if they're not filled with truth and with uh, useful information that can help you make a decision. So with that, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.